Right now, live at 6, the escaped inmate captured after a manhunt for several days. Hello and thanks for joining us tonight. Live at 6, I'm Trisha Keen. And I'm Joe Muller. Now, officials are calling for glaring issues within the Nevada Department of Corrections to be addressed and quickly before something like this happens again. Reporter Sean Delancey joins us live at Metro headquarters with everything we know so far. Sean. Yeah, Joe and Tricia, convicted pipe bomber Porfirio Duarte Herrera was missing for four days before anybody said anything about it. And Sheriff Joe Lombardo says that that is a major concern as it hampers his department's ability to keep people safe. Luckily, as you can see in this surveillance video, a dispatcher at Las Vegas shuttles near Eastern and Owens recognized Duarte Herrera as he tried to board a bus to Tijuana and manager Gabriel Delgadillo called 911. Delgadillo says that it's lucky that the two Tuesday shuttles were all full, or the Arthur Herrera would already be in Mexico. When officers arrived and questioned the inmate, it appeared that he knew his run was over. Where are you going to go? Any guns in the bag? You know why we got you, right? Thanks, Quartu. Yeah, it's going to be him. The Fraternal Order of Police founder Paul Lunkwitz says that Duarte Herrera used a dummy as a decoy and used battery acid to corrode away the frame of his cell window. Lunkwitz says that the inmate then hopped over or went through a border fence. On top of that, Lunkwitz says that the guard tower overlooking Duarte Herrera's cell was unmanned and had been that way for years. Metro Sheriff Joe Lombardo says the ease of Duarte Herrera's escape combined with a days late warning to the general public made everyone unsafe. When you put the, the safety of the public into jeopardy, that is my primary mission, right, to, to eliminate that concern. And the policies and the procedures and all the failures that occurred on Friday and up till Tuesday need to be addressed. Lombardo says he's been in constant contact with the state inspector general to identify and rectify problems within the Department of Corrections. Governor Steve Sisolak, Lombardo's Democrat opponent in the race for governor, called the failures unacceptable and ordered an investigation on Tuesday. Today, he had a fiery response to how all of this was handled. Yeah, it seems like the, I didn't get the whole story. All of that is an investigation in terms of not just what happened, in terms of how it was communicated to me, and to law enforcement and to the general public. We will get to the bottom of what happened and appropriate action will be taken against anybody that was involved in it, believe me. Lombardo says that DOC officials were invited to come here to Metro headquarters and answer questions during today's press conference, but nobody showed up. Lombardo says he does not know why his invite went unanswered. At Metro headquarters, I'm Sean Delancey. Sean, thank you. And we spoke with former Clark County District Attorney David Roger about whether his escape would lead to new charges. But tonight at 6, we hear what he has to say about the implications for the prison following this escape. They are going to have to do an investigation from top to bottom to, to find out what happened, where were the lapses, what was it a, a lack of manpower, or was it uh, people not doing the bed checks as, as they, they should. They do a head count. Uh, they do a cell check uh, all, all the time, and uh, you know that obviously wasn't done. And if it was done, you know they were duped by this apparent mannequin that was uh, in in his bed. Roger says to escape under these circumstances is a one to ten felony. He will then be reclassified and will be sent back to one of the maximum and more secure prisons. Investigators say they are still looking into whether Duarte Herrera had help in or outside the prison, and if so, those accomplices could also face charges. We'll have more on this story tonight at 11.